today we are continuing our journey through West Virginia with a visit to Fairmont and some of the surrounding cities. As with most places in West Virginia, Fairmont boasts some beautiful scenery and provides some great opportunities for anyone who enjoys photography. The beautiful architecture stands witness to the former glory of this little Appalachian town. Fairmont played an important part of West Virginia history as the hometown of Francis Pierpont, one of the principal founders of the state and its first governor. Just across the river, we find the Riverfront Park, a great place to enjoy outdoor activities, as well as a great view of the city. Not far from the city, in the town of Philippi, we find the Philippi Cover Bridge. Despite being around 170 years old, we are still able to drive across it. The Cover Bridge almost became just a memory due to flooding in 1985 and a fire in 1989. Fortunately, this historical landmark remains for us to enjoy. Also by the bridge are several memorials to the miners this state is well known for, specifically those who lost their lives in the Seagull mine disaster, where 13 coal miners were trapped after an explosion, with only one of them eventually surviving. Next to the bridge and memorials is a small museum converted from an old real depot. It features some mummies and other artifacts from the area. Next, we are on to the nearby city of Grafton. Grafton is the birthplace of Mother's Day as a holiday. Be sure to stop at Andrew's Methodist Episcopal Church to see the International Mother's Day Shrine. Grafton is a quiet place today. But the old train station and village hotel stand as reminders of its once busy past. to the Anna Java's house. Anna Java's is a recognized founder of Mother's Day. stop is Grafton National Cemetery, which holds the remains of some of the first soldiers killed during the American Civil War. The very first 
first Union soldier killed by a Confederate soldier in the war, T. Bailey Brown, is also buried here. If you happen to be in Grafton around the Christmas holiday, do not miss their beautiful Christmas light display. Let's have a look. to the Marion County Historical Society Museum. Let's go in and look at some of the artifacts and history they have on display. Yeah, I mean, I'm downstairs, but I'll just take you up there for a quick look because I'm working up there. I'm trying to get everything ready. The portrait uh, above the fireplace, that's Francis Pierpont. He is the Upstairs, you can see the old jail. Don't get too scared if some of the old inmates are still hanging around in ghost form. to ask some questions about the area. Um, I know you mentioned you moved away from California when you were 12, right? So um, was West Virginia your first stop? Or uh, like, where did you go after um, California? Well, I was 12 years old mm -hmm. and I was uh, a ward of the court of uh, in California. Uh, basically, my sister and I uh, were taken away and they found my father, who mm -hmm. we didn't really know, but he was a sign painter, and he was in New Jersey, uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And so the state of California sent us to live with our father in uh, Pleasant Pleasantville, I think it was called, New Jersey, which mm -hmm. is near Atlantic City. And uh, so uh, after a few years uh, in the 70s, uh, late 70s, my dad had found a brochure about West Virginia, mm -hmm. and uh, he found some land for five hundred dollars an acre uh -huh. in, in, in Harrison County in a uh -huh. place called Kinchelo, which is a uh, rural rural part of uh, Harrison County. Uh -huh. And so he bought it was like thirteen acres in Kinchelo, uh -huh. and he built his own house there. And he got it. Him and his uh, his uh, partner, 
they weren't married, but uh, Beverly, uh, they bought the the land for five hundred dollars an acre. Wow! In Kinchelow. So um, you have been living in West Virginia since um, uh, 1979. 79? Yes, I was 19 years old. So what was um, West Virginia like back then, like when you came back from... In 1979, uh, Clarksburg, mm-hmm. Clarksburg was uh, a prosperous city. Clarksburg mm-hmm. was a lot different than it is now. And it was a banking center. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of... Uh, very prominent banks. The Empire National Bank, which is now, I understand, kind of closed. I don't know if there's anything in the building or not, but it was beautiful. Uh, And I I actually worked for uh, Mr. Highland. Mr. Mm -hmm. Highland was the president of the bank, and he owned the newspaper in Clarksburg. Mm -hmm. And I uh, eventually, I got a job for that. In 1986, I started working for the Clarksburg newspaper as a reporter. (laughs) Yeah. Nice. (laughs) I've had kind of a... a (laughs) Wild career. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. uh, I had work ethic, though. I I worked, you know, I did a lot of different things. I worked for regional jail. I worked as a newspaper reporter. Uh Uh-huh. I worked as a, a security guard. Uh, I keep getting off track. So I worked there for 10 years. Uh, but uh, so what was Clarksburg like? Uh, Clarksburg was a prosperous town. Uh, before the mall was built, before uh, the Meadowbrook Mall was built, mm-hmm. uh, in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, The downtown in Clarksburg had everything. Uh, You could walk to Mm -hmm. just about anywhere you wanted to go. Your your kids' schools were there, Uh, the churches, the stores. It was like a mall downtown. You had two stores, you had restaurants, lunch counters, you had Murphy's and McCoury's, which were like a lunch counter department store. You had... uh, Stone and Thomas, uh, there was a J.C. Penney's, everything was there, so, and it was a prosperous town. Mm-hmm. So and everything was thriving at that time, right? There were factories. Um, anybody that wanted a job could find one, usually within a day or two. Mm-hmm. You could, there was a lot of glass, glass factories, uh, because West Virginia has the sandstone and the mm-hmm. limestone, so uh, the glass industry was thriving in the, really the whole state. There's, there was a lot of glass factories mm-hmm. in West Virginia. And Clarksburg, there was a bunch. There was the, the Acro Agate Marble and Toy Novelty Company. Mm-hmm. They made marbles. And uh, there was uh, uh, Hazel Atlas. Uh, there was uh, Anchor Hawking, which you can still see the old building that's uh-huh. empty now. Clarksburg's changed so much, but it, it used to be it used to be a thriving little town, rich rich town. Yeah. So, what are the people like in this area? Um, are they, you know, generally more friendly? Um, oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the. Uh, the Appalachian people in general are, uh, they're, they're friendly people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they uh, are very accepting of others, uh, foreigners or just uh, for other, you know, people from other places. They're, they're not judgmental people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're... Uh, uh, there's actually a whole thing that's been written about. Uh, it's called Appalachian Values. Uh-huh. And uh, there's like 10, and I'm trying to think of what they were because I learned them when I went to the college. <laughs> <laughs> Long time <laughs> but ago. <laughs> they're really, they ring, ring true. I'm sure you can still look them up if you looked up actual Appalachian Values. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just uh, how people are friendly and uh, kind of humorous, but it's kind of a dry humor. We find humor in, in things, uh-huh. just <laughs> uh, things that some people might not think are so funny. Uh, uh, we're resourceful. Uh-huh. We're very resourceful people. Uh, a lot of people have gardens and hunt. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, it actually used to be acceptable for uh, young boys to take their rifles with them to school because they would walk to school and on the way they might shoot a squirrel and <laughs> mom would cook it for dinner. <laughs> yeah. So like um, today, like people are they different from you know how people are, uh, were back then? Like any today? difference? Uh huh. Uh, like the the culture or you know like the way I, people behave i think i think it's it, it is i think young people i it's kind of sad i think that they're they're losing some of the traditions mm-hmm. that we had and the ways of doing things they do things different uh, and i guess it's just something that us older people need to accept <laughs> i guess in a way but uh, I'd like to see some of our traditions and things uh, kind of continued. I try to continue them with my own mm-hmm. grandkids and my family. This part of our population has seen better days, but still has a lot to offer visitors looking to do some exploring in the region. Enjoyed this video? Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, so you don't miss out on future videos. See you next time.